Hello, Riley. We're going to take a look at your five characteristics posting here. I've got it all queued up, I believe. And so here we are. Uh, I'm just going to kind of jump in, take a look at the overall um, posting, meaning just kind of looking at how you've posted it, make sure you've got like things labeled, um, organized in the way that we're asking you, taking a look at things like exposures, making sure things aren't too light or too dark, that kind of thing. Uh, looks like we've got the categories here. At some point, uh, it appears that your photographs started to become very, very wide angled um, here, meaning uh, it, it, everything seems to be sort of very far away. And but but you don't you're not necessarily standing very far away. You, it looks like you're right up on the table. And what that tells me is that you have a very wide angle setting on your lens, meaning uh, your lens usually has a, a multiple focal length, a zoom on it. And when you open it wide, wide up, you know, pull the zoom all the way back, you get what's called a wide angle. And that's the difference between what we're seeing here on these first few and um, and these here where it seems like everything is just so far away. Anyway, um, exposure wise though, meaning the lights and the darks and all of that seem to be okay. Um, not too bright, not too dark. Um, now, composition overall, meaning the arrangement of the elements within the picture plane. So you've got this square, you got stuff arranged in that square, that's the composition. Um, I like very much that you are engaging the edges here, that you are allowing things to move um, or to, to break the, the top and the bottom of the plane. I remember sort of calling out to the class and asking everyone to make sure that they were doing that. So I'm glad that you were doing those kinds of things. Um, even where you're taking a little bit of a, of a, of a sort of a, a chance here on this, on this image where you're even just being very simplistic. You've got the bottle and then you're barely allowing objects here. There's nothing wrong with that, playing around with that kind of thing. The lighting is sort of trailing behind. Uh, one of the issues that we are having is a little bit of uh, the focus is sort of behind the bottle here. And what's happening is that the background or the drapery back here is more in focus and we want to kind of avoid that most of the time so um, that can be corrected if we use the manual focus on your camera if you don't have manual focus on your camera that is a little bit of a problem a little bit of a difficulty for you but um, usually we want to have that camera set on manual focus so you can select just where the camera is focusing so that you don't wind up with it with something sharp that you don't want uh, for it to be sharp. Also, the depth of field would help. So we're studying that now, and that's going to um, that's going to improve the, the situation there. Uh, we do have some you know some things that are going on here that are a little bit like what I would call extraneous, meaning there there are things in the images that maybe aren't necessary. This is not bad. I mean, I think what you're doing here is kind of interesting where things are sort of strangely juxtaposed. It's quite beautiful that you're using uh, the shadows here, you know, and you're taking advantage of the direction of light. Position number two, you've got the shadows heading in that direction, tells me exactly what's, what's going on there. Position three, you're using the shadows. Again, our focus is pretty deep. Your focus way back here, it would have been probably better if your sharp focus was more closer in, like somewhere right in here. Um, here we have the light in the frame. Now that can work. I've seen plenty of people um, incorporate the light in these photographs. This I don't think is an example of where it's working very well. It's, it's more of a distraction. It's not really participating in the rest of the composition. So I would maybe rethink that one um, the next time you see those kinds of uh, elements in your, in your image. Question whether it's really participating and whether it belongs there um, or not. So, you know, you're, you're, you're playing around with the shadows. That's excellent. You're allowing things to run off the edge. That's excellent. There's just some details that you want to pay attention to. Probably as you get a little more facile with your photography, in other words, as it becomes more natural and you're thinking less about it, <laughs> um, you're going to get more comfortable and be able to pay attention to details a little bit more. Little details like the horizon, you know, this background, if you're going to include the table, 
you know, this slight di angle where it's not quite, quite, it's, it's not at a diagonal, but it's not quite straight either. It's sort of just barely off. It doesn't look like you're deliberately doing it, but it doesn't look like it's quite straight either. So we want to kind of either do it all the way or or not at all when we're uh, when we're choosing to do to do that. Again, focus is a little bit of a problem here. Probably has something to do with either you have it on autofocus, number one, number two. You're forgetting to focus if you have it on manual and you focus once. You still have to focus every single time afterward. Um, and focusing can be really difficult sometimes when you have a really small lens, but you can definitely see that the, the lens is, is difficult. Now, you shouldn't have camera shake here because we're dealing with a tripod, which is why we have it on the tripod. So the camera shouldn't be a factor in terms of movement. Um, so that shouldn't, we shouldn't see this at all. Um, this tells me that, that something is going on there. Uh, again, it's either focus or camera shake that's going to cause something like this. Now, these images are are pretty close to one another where we're not moving elements around a whole lot. Um, you, you know, the elements are, the, are what changes in these first two, two scenarios. We're not moving the camera, but the elements do. So I would really encourage you to play around with composition, move the elements around quite a bit in between shots, um, things like that. Now, the, the idea behind intensity with the two lights is you have the key light, the main light source, then you have the fill light, pardon the siren there. Um, you have the key light and then you have the, the fill light and we wanna balance them out so that the key light is the main light source still, it doesn't, isn't overpowered or being uh, competed with. Uh, it The fill light, the little extra light on that side is meant to just supplement. And so I think you're doing a pretty good job here without overdoing it. Um, so, I mean, that is, that's a good thing. We're also avoiding that, um, uh, you know, that what, what's called the, the butterfly effect where you have equal amounts of light coming from either side and you get this sort of in between light. So you've got light over here and light over here and then dark in the middle. That's what's called the butterfly. Um, I, I don't see it here, but you can probably go through and see some others. Again, very excellent work here with um, the shadows. That's very good. Anytime you're, you're doing that, you're looking at the, at the right things. Okay, now we're getting really, really far away. And this just has to do with, again, a setting on your camera that somehow, you know, when you reset on that day, you wound up with your, your lens. You probably noticed it. Like, why are these pictures seem like they're so far away? Ask me questions. Um, I could have helped you right away if I knew that this was giving you uh, an issue where things just seem really far away. All you have to do is just say, hey, something, uh, this doesn't look quite right. Why are these images so far away? It's going to be a really simple answer for me to answer for you. Um, I'll never you know, be bothered by having questions asked. That's what I'm there for during those sessions. I'm kind of hanging out, making sure that I'm not over, you know, overbearing on anybody. But at the same time, if you've got a question, please, please ask me. And I, we could have easily corrected this. Um, and you wouldn't have had the, the trouble of having these things so far away and also have the lights in there once again. So we don't, we, we want to correct those things. That said, let's just kind of take a look at these for the lighting themselves, where you're using the blue, meaning you're cooling the light off and then using a daylight uh, setting on your camera where you're using a juxtaposed light. Now, here you're starting to get a little bit where you're playing around with the light and the, the, the elements. You're starting to, to, to figure out, oh, well, I might as well try to do something with the light. So at least you're, you're starting to try to work with the light a little bit compositionally. It's still is not usually the great, the best idea to do it because the light is just so distracting from everything else um, in the scene. But at the very minimum, it looks like you're attempting to do something compositionally with the light, which is a, a good instinct. Um, but still, we have the lights in there, which uh, aren't really helping with the, with the photography. Good shadow work here, uh, again. Um, you've got some crossing here, but it's really difficult to determine the compositions here because they're just so far away. Uh, I can't really tell what's, what you're doing here. But um, now we kind of get into some of the others. Let's move back and look at now uh, where we now are getting into the contrast. So contrast is where we start to use a reflector. Um, that's not a diffuser. We're not covering the light. 
we're using the reflector. That is, you have one light source, the key light. It still doesn't have anything draped over it or anything like that. Uh, and you use a reflector, in other words, a card that bounces light off. What we're doing is recycling the light back into the scene there. And so I'm looking at this and I can tell you've diffused it right here. So I think you've missed a, you, you, you've mislabeled these a little bit because this is diffused. That's telling me you're working with hardness. Hardness has to do with the shadows here, how soft or how not soft the, the, the shadows tend to be. So this is a hardness um, image. Um, this is a hardness image, it looks like anyway, because we have very soft shadows um, and your lights are diffused. Um, so in the contrast, you're not working with diffused lights. You're only using one light source in contrast, the key light, and then the card. So this is just me. Miss, you just, I think you just mislabeled this one. Is all. The, it, this is all just fine. You can you can you can correct for this. And we're missing obviously hardness, but we're actually missing contrast. Is what you're missing um, because these are all hardness, and also these are the same composition. Um, again, not something we want to do. I'm just going to take for granted that maybe you ran out of time. Uh, on this because you know you were like working on it and then maybe you got a little flustered with these things being so far away and things just kind of didn't work out for you that's okay not everybody is is um, gonna start off with a bang I think you did a good job on the very first ones here where you were controlling the the camera and you were working with all elements kind of close up and things like that and it just looks like things kind of got out of control for you toward the end there and um, that's okay because we have the resubmission um, uh, option for you and it's it's really straightforward you're gonna um, you're gonna kind of complete the things that you haven't completed uh, and then you'll resubmit the whole project. So you can redo any parts of this that you want, but even ones you don't redo, you'll just resubmit what you submitted before. So you'll have a whole project resubmitted and then what I'll do is I'll grade that one as well as the first one and I combine the two grades together. So usually you people do fine once they have that. The bonus is that you don't even have to do it right away. So you'll probably want to do that um, simply because you didn't quite get all the project done. So you'd want to resubmit anyway, even if everything was great. But I think you, you probably just had some missteps toward the end that you want to redo nonetheless. So I'll be happy to go over um, any other things. Like if you have some questions about what you might want to do to approach the, the resubmission or some other things like that. So uh, just uh, approach me, let me know what you, uh, uh, what kind of questions you might have and we'll see you in the studio. All right, bye now.